Yuk kita bangkit kembali melawan sampah. Data dari World Economic Forum tahun 2017 menyebutkan 620 ribu ton sampah plastik mencemari perairan Indonesia yang disebabkan oleh pengelolaan sampah kurang tepat. Data juga menunjukkan bahwa rumah dan bisnis kecil tidak mempunyai pilihan selain membuang sampah dengan cara yang membahayakan lingkungan. Bahkan, 78% sampah plastik rumahan dibakar dekat dari rumah, 12% dibuang ke aliran air, dan 10% dibuang di tanah ataupun dikubur, yang akhirnya sampai ke laut. Namun, sejak munculnya pandemi COVID-19, Indonesia juga menghadapi masalah pada lonjakan sampah plastik yang disebabkan oleh ketergantungan besar terhadap layanan pengiriman makanan dan belanja online, sementara daur ulang sedang menurun. Data menunjukkan adanya kenaikan tajam hingga 70% dibandingkan sebelum pandemi, yaitu 23 ton per hari antara Maret ke Mei. Data Kementerian Lingkungan Hidup dan Kehutanan atau KLHK menyebutkan bahwa pada tahun 2020 total produksi sampah Indonesia telah mencapai 67,8 juta ton. Artinya, ada sekitar 185.753 ton sampah yang dihasilkan setiap harinya oleh 270 juta penduduk Indonesia. Dari data tersebut, sebanyak 5,4 juta ton diantaranya merupakan plastik bekas pakai seperti botol plastik. Selama ini, sampah pasca konsumsi, terutama botol plastik bekas pakai tersebut, telah dianggap sebagai ancaman bagi kelangsungan hidup dan kelestarian lingkungan. Masker sekali pakai meningkat di tengah rekomendasi pemerintah tentang efektivitas masker. Terlebih, masker medis sekali pakai kini mudah didapat dengan harga yang terjangkau. Penggunaan yang meningkat juga diikuti melimpahnya kembali sampah masker sekali pakai. Akibatnya, sampah masker sekali pakai menjadi masalah baru. Sampah masker ini dibuang bercampur dengan sampah lain bersama dengan sampah plastik, rumah tangga, bahkan tercecer ke badan air seperti sungai dan selokan. Kita memang bukan Swedia dan Singapura. Namun saya percaya Indonesia akan menemukan cara yang tepat untuk mengatasi sampah. Sweden has turned its waste into gold. We're doing good business and at the same time we feel good about it because we're helping protect the environment. Out of the 4.4 million tons of Swedish waste each year, just 1% is dumped in landfill. How do the Swedes manage to do that? How come they are so far ahead of other European countries in the recycling business? This shopping center, 100 kilometers from Stockholm, looks no different to any other crockery and glassware, furniture, electrical goods are for sale. But all the items are, in fact, being recycled in a unique project. These computers, for example, are being repaired one by one for resale. And here you go. It's working again. Okay, and here comes a DVD player, and it also has a VHS tape player and recorder. And is it working? Okay, yeah, it works. I'm moving house, so there are many things that I won't be bringing along with me. That's how this treasure here turned up. Yes, and someone else can use them, and that's a good thing. A whole culture of recycling has sprung up in Sweden. This Frenchman, Jan, has been living in the country for 12 years and has adapted. He pays special care to sort all his kitchen waste. Take this banana peel, for instance. It goes here, the special bag for organic waste. The city of Stockholm supplies rubbish bags free of charge. The main rule is to separate the waste properly. This here is the bag for all the plastic waste. And I put the rest in here. Paper, magazines, glass and metal bottles. Consumers make a trip to a recycling center on average twice a week. There's one nearby in every district, each with seven recycling bins. What we do for the environment just becomes part of the routine, and that is a source of satisfaction. Each person has their own role to play in environmental protection. Swedish people bring in around 480 kilograms of waste per person per year. Half of it, metal, plastic, glass, goes directly for recycling. 
the other half also gets a second life. Anything that cannot be recycled is transported to power generation plants. From household rubbish to used packaging in all, 750,000 tons of waste is treated each year. Huge pincers drop waste into incinerators that turn it into energy. We have electricity producing turbines, and in the process we also generate heat, which is made available to Stockholm residents. 100,000 people get heating that way, and 200,000 people benefit from the electricity we generate. The power generation causes hardly any pollution. Authorities say CO2 emissions are two times lower than the limits allow. The system works so well that to keep incinerators working flat out, Sweden treats waste from other countries. 10% of the waste our company treats here is, in general, imported. Where do they come from? Mostly from the United Kingdom. Sweden imported 1.4 million tons of waste in 2016. Waste exporting countries paid 36 euros per ton, bringing in more than 50 million euros. We see waste as a commodity, a product one can sell or buy, just like other forms of energy. Waste is an efficient source of energy and it's also a very good way to reduce our environmental impact. Sweden wants to go further. It hopes to reuse 100% of its waste within three years and have no landfill sites at all. Well, for more on Even as medical waste piles up is a tiny fraction of municipal solid waste. Of the 2 billion tons of waste generated globally, 12% is plastic waste but it's dwarfed by food and organic matter and paper and cardboard scraps. Once all that trash is collected, there are three main ways it is treated and disposed of – by burning the trash in an incinerator, using a landfill, or dumping it openly without any processing whatsoever. While 33% of global waste end up directly at open dumps, governments are increasingly recognizing that these sites are bad for the environment and can be vectors for diseases. Instead, they are opting for more sustainable ways to manage their waste, such as incinerators and recycling programs. Nowhere is this more pronounced than in densely populated Singapore, which has nearly 8,000 people per square kilometer, more than 17 times that of India and 200 times that of the US. Between 1970 and 2016, the amount of solid waste disposed in Singapore increased about sevenfold as its population and economy grew. Of the 7 million tons of waste generated in the country in 2019, more than half were recycled. The journey of a single piece of trash brings us to Tuas South Incineration Plant, the largest waste incineration facility in Singapore to date. Kan Kok Wa is the general manager of the plant, one of four such facilities in the country which can convert waste into energy. Waste are collected from the industrial, commercial premises and household premises. An average of about 600 trucks are coming to Tuas South Incineration Plant. They will discharge the waste into the bunker. Cranes will then grab and feed the waste into the incinerator. The temperature in the furnace is about 850 to 1000 degrees it will achieve a 90% reduction in terms of volume. This will then help to conserve the space required for landfill. Singapore is a very small country, it's land scarce, so the need to conserve land is very critical for Singapore. Along the way, we have magnetic separator. Ferrous and non-ferrous matter will be recovered from the ash. Ash will then be transported from the ash pit to another facility. Pollutants produced during incineration are treated before being released into the atmosphere, ensuring clean air is being discharged. Water will be converted into steam from the energy recovered from the combustion of waste. This water will be then converted into high-temperature, high-pressure steam to run turbine generators. This is to produce electricity power 20% is being consumed internally, with the rest being exported to the national grid. 
The total power generated by the four waste-to-energy incineration plants in Singapore, including Tuas South, contributes about 2 to 3 percent to the national electricity demand in the country. An upcoming waste-to-energy plant built by Mitsubishi Heavy Industries and water treatment company Hyflux will be able to incinerate 3,600 tons of waste per day while generating electricity to be self-sufficient and providing excess power to the national grid. How much waste is collected and uh, you know, managed in TSIP? In 2019, about 1.08 million tons of waste is collected. That is equivalent to about 3,000 tons of waste daily. After the incineration process, my journey takes me on a ferry to the country's only landfill located along the Singapore Strait, one of the busiest waterways in the world. Semakau Landfield is an offshore landfield enclosed by a 4.3-mile perimeter rock embankment which creates a sea space to fill with incinerated rubbish. In operation since 1999 and costing nearly half a billion dollars, the island is more than just a landfield. Actually, we are make up of two big islands called the Pula Semakau and Pula Sake. And these are two joined together into what we call, what we see here, a 350 hectares Pula Samaka landfill. A barge ferries more than 2,000 tons of waste between mainland Singapore and Samaka landfill daily, says Desmond Lee, general manager of the landfill. We have big equipment such as the dump truck, excavators, etc. These are equipments that we use daily. And you can oh. hear, we have also the... Uh... What's going on there? Yeah. This barge actually comes from the Tuas Marine Transfer Station from Tuas, travel a 33 kilometers journey all the way here. Tell me about how the ash is going to get transferred out. There is what you call the long arm excavator. This excavator will grab the ash and as well as the non incinerable waste up and drop into what you call the dump truck. The trucks will then unload the ash into specific cells within the lagoon to prevent leaks and contamination of the seawater outside the rock buns, the perimeter is lined with impermeable membrane and a layer of marine clay. As the water level within the lagoon increases with rainfall and the dumping of the ash, the overflow is discharged into the open sea after being treated at a wastewater treatment plant. If you travel around in Samakau, you will see there are a lot of mangroves around and there are also beautiful corals. This is a testimony to the absence of adverse impact from our operation in landfill. We also want to ensure the marine life and nature in this area continue to strive. How filled is Samakau landfill right now? Based on the current waste generation, Samakau landfill will be completely filled by 2035. However, there are current plans to work together with the different government agencies businesses as well as the communities to look into how we can extend the life of Samaka landfill. What lessons can we learn from Singapore's other previous landfills? One key lesson that we learned is that it takes a long time to remediate the landfill and then there's also resources need to commit to them before the land can be remediated for other uses. The other strategy we are also taking is looking at the possibilities of recycling the insulation bottom ash, which is now known as new sand, and could be used for non-structural concrete, for example. To date, new sand has been used to create footpaths and benches, while tests are ongoing for its application in road construction projects. Landfills are a short-term solution to a long-term problem. In Landscares Singapore, which is slightly smaller than New York City, space is a luxury, and it's a matter of time before Samarco landfill is full. Singapore aims to reduce the waste going into Samakau Landfield by 30% by 2030 as part of its Zero Waste Master Plan. The country also intends to develop new waste management facilities to meet the treatment needs of wastewater, sludge and even food waste, ultimately improving the recycling rate in Singapore.